Veritasium has recently made a video about a simple electric circuit that has some people kind of confused uh, as to why the answer he gave is a certain way. Um, and I'll kind of explain in this video why it doesn't break causality or what happens and if we snip the ends or whatever, I'll explain all that. Uh, just for those people who don't know what the question is, I'm going to play the question real fast, real quick, uh, so that we're all on the same page. Imagine you have a giant circuit consisting of a battery, a switch, a light bulb, and two wires which are each 300,000 kilometers long. That is the distance light travels in one second. So they would reach out halfway to the moon and then come back to be connected to the light bulb which is one meter away. Now the question is, after I close this switch, how long would it take for the bulb to light up? Is it half a second, one second, two seconds, one over C seconds, or none of the above? All right, so at this point, most people will probably say it's either one second, or if they're pandemic and want to say, like, you know, the little distance here matters, it's going to be none of the above. Uh, but, you know, it's probably going to be somewhere around one second because it's going to take uh, the electricity for, to go around the loop here for half a second and another loop half back, half a second back uh, for one second total, right? Uh, but the problem is, I guess, at the very end of the video, he says it takes uh, D, or one over C seconds, is the answer. Uh, and people are kind of confused as to why it is one over C seconds, uh, right? In order to figure out what is going on, we've got to kind of look at his problem setup here and notice that the structure of his wires is important. Um, he has structured the wires such that they are two pieces of wire that are like parallel to each other and uh, they're very, very, very long, right? Uh, and they're spaced exactly one meter apart throughout the whole thing. Uh, so that is important because when you have two conductors next to each other, that forms a capacitor. So for a normal piece of wire, there are tiny little capacitors between the two wire segments and that will go on forever. So there's gonna be an infinitely many amount of capacitors. I can only draw three here and three here because of the limitations of software here. But imagine like millions and millions and basically infinite continuous capacitors across the entire length of wire. And down the actual wire, a single piece of wire, um, they are basically modeled as inductors. Um, and real in real life, these numbers uh, will be very, very tiny. They will be unmeasurably small values for every tiny segment of wire. Uh, but uh, I just put ones here for, as an example. Uh, in this uh, setup, I have the resistor in the middle here as, as a light bulb, and we're going to be measuring across node one and node two a voltage uh, to see if there's going to be any voltage change there. Uh, this is our battery, and here's our switch from his question. Uh, so yeah, so imagine that these get repeated like an infinite amount of times uh, across the length of wire. At the very end of the wire, uh, he has them connected, uh, and I have this set up here with a little switch, and I'll explain what is going on here. So at t equals to 0 0.1 seconds, I'm gonna flip this switch down. The, sec the thing is we only care about what is going on immediately around the circuit and I can't make enough like elements here such that the time delay is anything noticeable that's computable by a computer here. Um, I mean, if you have a better piece of software, you could probably have enough elements to delay the signal long enough. But right now, this signal uh, from the switch across this capacitor is gonna be happening at the same time as everything else. So uh, it's gonna be too fast for me to simulate. So I'm just gonna disconnect it from the rest of the circuit. And that is valid because the wire, like whatever's going on in a circuit, like one light second away or like a very far distance away is gonna be inconsequential to our immediate vicinity around our battery and light bulb. Like the immediate, immediate area around here is what matters. Everything else is so far away, the second I turn on the circuit like that, uh, we could just ignore it. So we could just disconnect it. So what is happening is I'm gonna turn on everything and at the same time, I'm gonna disconnect and disconnect. Um, the reason why I had to keep them connected in the beginning is just to set up the initial conditions. He has this problem set up such that everything is at positive potential. So the capacitors have no charge on them. It's gonna be positive, positive, and positive all around the loop all the way over here. So that's just to set up the initial condition. And if we simulate this, you will see that and how to give it a bit of time to run the simulation, that at the switching time, which at, which is said to be at uh, 0 0.1 seconds, there's a little spike in voltage. It should actually reach uh, exactly the battery voltage, which is uh, one volt, but I think because of uh, the steps I use, the st step size I used, it's too fast, so it kind of like is slightly below the actual one volt number. But yeah, you can see that there's a spike in voltage. But you also kind of notice that, first of all, it's instantaneous, right? And the actual like, you know, um, voltage from the actual uh, battery is going to come later, like that, that throughout the conductor. It's going to come much, much later. Uh, we disconnected it, so it doesn't affect our simulation here. But yeah, that will be the one second time that some people would have guessed for his answer, right? But instantaneously uh, after switching is basically uh, instant response across this uh, resistor uh, because the, of the capacitors right around it. So yeah, so like everything in the circuit, like for the long wire and everything, it's all 
ignorable. Like everything here is all just red herrings, right? It's it's completely ignorable. In fact, we don't even need anything. Like we don't even need wires at all. You could just put a light bulb and you could put a battery, right? You don't even need to connect them at all. Uh, the second that like a, a voltage exists, so if we turn on the battery, if you can magically like uh, have no battery and then have a battery pop into existence, that will induce uh, a, a like a pastor kind of effect across this distance here uh, from the electric fields, and then that will cause a little spike in voltage across the, the light bulb. The problem is, is that this is so minuscule. The amount of energy supplied by this is so minuscule that even though it's technically at the same voltage as the battery, uh, it's gonna be insanely like small, uh, and it won't even be enough energy to uh, like warm up the filament in the light bulb. So he did say in the video that this light bulb is a perfect light bulb, that the second you see any voltage across it, uh, it will turn on, right? Uh, but it will be for a very, very short period of time, uh, and it's basically like ignorable. Now the simulation has no distance uh, between the two wires, like this, uh, there is actually no distance here, right? Um, uh, but in real life, in his real life example, there was a one meter distance, and that's where his one over C number comes from. That is the, the time for this field or this, this little bit to propagate the current across. Um, so if it's one meter distance here, it'll be one over C. If it's two meters distance, it'll be two over C, and so forth. And that's why it doesn't break causality, right? Because it's not the distance of these two wires. It doesn't really matter, like we disconnect them. Um, it's not the length of the wire that matters, it's the distance between the light bulb and uh, I guess the, the, the battery and switch over here. So that distance was one meter, it's gonna be one over C. If it's one light year of distance, then it's gonna take one year for this little bit of capacitance to be felt across uh, this, this little node here, right? Uh, another question, I guess, is what if we snip the ends? I did say that it doesn't matter like how long this wire is, but it does matter for the initial condition, right? If you snip the ends, then depending on what like the voltage, you know, is, is uh, reference to, if everything is referenced to ground, like it's ground, if it's disconnected and you snip the ends, then this piece of wire will be ground, this piece of wire, all, all the above here will also be grounded. Uh, and when you, when you flip the switch, it will just be ground over ground and nothing would happen. And so literally nothing at all would happen there. However, if we either move the switch to the other side or flip the battery around or something like that, or if when you have something disconnected, this floats to some different voltage in the ground, then yes, the second you flip this, there will be a potential difference, no matter how small, and that will cause some current to flow, right? Um, and you could think of this, if you don't like transmission lines, you could think of this as just two antennas. You have one long conductor, uh, and you apply a voltage to it, that's basically an antenna, and it's gonna radiate energy to this another antenna, that's the other wire, and it's gonna receive the energy, and then it's gonna be able to supply a little bit of energy to the light bulb. I think what is tripping up people is his use of real world props for this question. He has a real light bulb, real wires, a uh, real battery, um, everything here, and a real switch. Uh, and I guess people kind of intuitively know that, yeah, between two pieces of metal, there should be a capacitance there, and if I have a wire with a battery attached to it, I turn that power on, it's basically an antenna and it's gonna radiate some some uh, energy and another piece of wire is gonna be able to receive it. But normally you would expect that that energy would be so, so, so small that it wouldn't really be able to turn on anything. And I think that's what's tripping people up. But what he's saying is that that's the energy that's gonna turn on his light bulb, uh, if only for a brief second. Um, you could also get uh, additional clues from his video where he talks about like, in, uh, like transformers, so transformers is the same thing. You're up, instead of capacitive coupling, it's uh, it's magnetic coupling there, um, and he also talks about like alternating currents and and uh, I guess th this this diagram. Yeah, energy is flowing through it uh, in all directions through the fields, but the majority of the, the energy that's actually going to be powering the light bulb is going to be coming through the actual wire, which is going to have to take a long trip around. Uh, but technically, yeah, like, you know, a tiny bit of energy is coming through the air and it's going to come through the air at light speed throughout that distance, which in his example is one meter. So another thing I want to mention is his mention of AC here. And that is important because the effect that I just described is uh, like a, a time sensitive effect, right? It's uh, it's based on us flipping the switch. Um, and you could think of that as half an AC signal uh, or turning something on. But uh, yeah, like if everything was at steady state, then none of the effects I described would, would happen. Uh, it only happens if you have some change in electric potential and, or if you have like an AC signal or if you like jiggle the battery around and move it farther or forward or back or something like that. That causes like basically radio waves and you could feel that at the at the terminals of the light bulb. 
So I think it would have been more clear if I reword this question as uh, instead of like a battery and a switch, let's say we have a high voltage spark here. Uh, and then instead of a light bulb, we have an oscilloscope. And then I think immediately uh, anyone with any sort of like electrical electrical engineering experience, or if you ever touch an oscilloscope, you will note that, yeah, that's pretty sensitive and you'll be able to detect uh, a signal on the oscilloscope uh, you know, across the room or maybe over a meter distance and the time it takes, it will be one meter divided by the speed of light, right? Uh, the, the actual wire loop around here is just to uh, transmit the power eventually, like the DC power will come through the loop and power your uh, oscilloscope. But immediately when you press the switch or have a spark, the oscilloscope will be able to immediately detect that uh, the second that happens. So yeah, I mean, I thought the, the question was pretty interesting. Uh, the, the, the presentation was really interesting. I think just people got kind of caught up on not being able to light the light bulb from the EM effects alone. And that's what he's talking about. Like this is all coupled uh, magnetic effects. And this is all like EM effects through the, through the wire, through the air here. Um, yeah, it's transmitting power through the air. But the majority of the power that's actually going to light the light bulb is going to come from the wires. And I think that's what's kind of throwing people off there. Uh, hopefully that clears things up a bit.